Hi! In this episode we talk about how to implement cyber immunity in practice and what should be the basis for it. One of the key principles of cyber immunity is the principle of minimizing the trusted code base, which means that there should be as little security critical code as possible. At the operating system level, the principle is embodied in the concept of a microkernel. At the same time, the very concept of a microkernel today raises a lot of questions, misunderstandings and sometimes even skepticism, for example, regarding performance issues. Today I will discuss some important questions with Andrei Nayenko, Kaspersky OS microkernel development team manager. Andrei. Hi. Uh, glad to see you here. Thanks for inviting here. Yeah. Andrei, can you tell us about uh, microkernel operating systems? Uh, how and why did they appear? Historically, monolithic designs appeared first. And with, uh, with the monolithic kernel, you have all the functionality of the kernel inside a single address space running with highest possible privileges. Those solutions worked pretty well at the time. But then, when systems became more and more complex, provided more and more functionality, some problems became obvious. And as the answer to, the, to those problems, microkernels appeared. The basic idea of the microkernel, let's move everything outside of the kernel, except those things that absolutely need to be inside the kernel. So, things like file systems, network stack, various drivers became just processes inside, inside the user space. And these gave a lot of advantages, like they don't influence each other, they are isolated. When you have a vulnerability in one of them, you can't exploit this vulnerability to attack other processes. Uh, you can debug those processes, you can debug drivers like any other program and it's a huge advantage when you develop something. So the microkernel designs made systems more stable, more secure, but you have to pay the price. And the price is performance, because you now need to communicate between various processes. In a monolithic kernel, when you need to call some driver, you just make a direct call and it's extremely fast. But when you have to do some communication inside a microkernel system, you have to call another process. And this includes a quite expensive uh, context switch. And uh, the performance penalty was quite significant at the time. But how it is solved today, it is, is it still a problem? or uh, microkernels became faster? Nowadays, hardware became much faster and current designs of microkernels are much faster too than at the beginning of their history. And uh, I don't think uh, the gap, the performance gap between microkernels and monolithic kernels are that big today. Uh, for example, when the vulnerabilities like uh, Spectre and Meltdown were discovered, the monolithic designs had to introduce additional context switches and uh, that made them slower and actually closer performance-wise to microkernels because they have a lot of context switches. Yes, monolithic kernels are in general faster than microkernels, but this performance advantage can be just irrelevant in a lot of cases, especially when you need security. Uh, but as I know, in some cases, performance of microkernels can be even better mm. than monolithic mm -hmm. kernels. Uh, can you comment on that? Yeah, actually, there are some specific areas when microkernel approach can give you better results performance-wise. For example, when you have a high load system, when you need a super fast network stack, you can do everything in place, in user space. And uh, there are actually quite well-known frameworks like DPDK that allows you to do in Linux exactly that. Apply this microkernel approach when you devote the driver and uh, the network stack 
to a single application, a user space program. That's exactly what microkernels do. And uh, yeah, in this case, this approach may be even faster than that in monolithic designs. And you mentioned uh, about uh, the first generation of microkernels. And uh, uh, could you tell us a bit more about this uh, evol evolution of uh, microkernel operating systems? How uh, did they evolve throughout the history? Yeah, as I said, the first generation of microkernels was quite slow because of this uh, IPC design. And this is the crucial part of the microkernel of any microkernel because it, it's actually a dispatcher between other processes. Uh, so, as the answer to those issues began some researches in universities and I think uh, one of the most well-known example of this research was made in uh, by Litke, Johann Litke and uh, his uh, L3, L4 kernels. Those designs uh, were extremely simple. There was basically nothing left in the kernel except tiny pieces that were really had to be in the kernel. And he emphasized the um, speed of IPC and he managed to make IPC so fast that it opened another page in the kernel history, microkernel history actually. Uh, since then there, there are a lot of designs um, were made. Those designs uh, more or less emphasize uh, the speed of IPC and uh, it actually brought new life to the idea of microkernels. Actually, nowadays there is another very interesting topic in the microkernel design uh, area uh, is formal verification. Because when you have a very, very small code base, mm -hmm. uh, you can verify it and prove uh, some properties. For example, you can prove uh, there are no out-of-bounds errors. This can be possible. Uh, formal verification is actually something that can be applied to any random piece of code. You have to carefully design this code and the abilities of this code are very limited. But in some areas, uh, this technology works very well. This approach gives good results. And uh, I think this is something that will be more and more developed. Mm -hmm. This trend will be on the rise, I think. Yeah, and it, it's interesting why formal verification didn't uh, develop before. So why it's uh, high time now uh, to start this formal verification. Uh, some methods mm -hmm. uh, became uh, more effective or some new technologies appear or, or, or why? Interesting. It's actually a huge theory behind the formal verification. A lot of things were done in 2000 around the beginning of this century, actually, I mean theoretical work. Uh, so it, it just wasn't possible before without this uh, theoretical foundation. I think is um, the rise of security concerns because now we have uh, much tighter requirements about security and also we have much higher uh, expectations about functionality. And when the functionality rises, the complexity rises, the amount of errors rises, mm -hmm. and you have to do something with that. And one of the possible solutions, not universal unfortunately, but in some cases this works very well, is formal verification. And what do you think will be the future of microkernel operating systems? Will they somehow displace monolithic kernels or they will be living in two parallel worlds? I believe uh, monolithic designs and microkernel designs will coexist. Uh, you can't just replace all the monolithic systems uh, despite obvious advantages of microkernel systems. Actually, nowadays we have microkernel systems all around us. They are in smartphones. For example, if you have a Qualcomm-based smartphone, there is a microkernel operating system inside the chip. We have them in notebooks. The, uh, if it is an Intel-based chipset inside, it's running a microkernel operating system. We can see the rise of interest to microkernel systems from big corporations like Google. They have Fuchsia, they have Kata. Quite interesting projects, by the way. Uh, so I think 
in the modern world, when we have serious security concerns, when a lot of people demand more security, corporations demand security, industry demands security, we will see the rise of microkernel systems. On the other hand, uh, the monolithic designs won't just disappear anywhere. They do their job, they do their job pretty well, despite those security problems they face. And uh, I think uh, we will see the move of monolithic designs towards microkernel approaches. I think they will pick some ideas from microkernels, like running some classes of drivers in the user space. For example, we have a file system in user space in Linux. So you can run a file system driver that will run like a regular program. We now can see that Apple is moving uh, to close the tighter control of their kernel. They are gradually, gradually phasing out kernel extensions uh, and pushing developers towards the user space. So I think monolithic systems are here to stay, but they indeed will evolve and uh, the microkernel designs will occupy various niches uh, and uh, spread their presence around us.